Should I really do this? So many people have made videos about Smash Brothers. My video may fall within the regions of the internet's black hole. It doesn't matter. I've got to try. But first, I must gather the three. Do I really need to introduce this game series to anyone? The many worlds of Nintendo collide in the ultimate showdown of strength and skill. Up to four players can choose their favorite characters, compete with signature attacks, and go at it in team battles and free-for-alls, or venture out on your own to conquer the single-player mode. Either way, Super Smash Brothers is a no-holds-barred action fest that will keep you coming back for more. This is a bump and bruise and brawl and bash! I didn't even write that last part in. Look at this. It's right in the box. You people think I'd make something up as silly as that? I swear to fucking God. Shit! With all this communication on the interwebs, Smash Brothers has become an extremely popular fighting game series. It's for everyone! Kids! Adults! Kids who act like adults! Adults who act like kids! There you go. That's everyone in the whole world. And what's so unique about Smash from every other fighter out at that time is three things. Recognizable characters, four-player fighting, and having no health bar. How do you even do that? How do you even make a, a fighting game without a health bar? That's like making a platformer without any platforms or a, a, a puzzle game with no puzzles! It's just not right! It's not just! It's unorthodox! If you really want to know, ask this guy, Masahiro Sakurai. He's the one who made all these awesome games and introduced the percent meter. Smash Brothers is basically a game of King of the Hill. When you get hit, the higher your percent meter goes up. And the higher it goes, the farther you fly. He also created a control scheme where you didn't have to memorize weird button combinations for certain characters and abilities. No back, upward, forward, or left down bullshit here. For those few people who have never played Smash, I'm going to teach you how to play in like two seconds. Okay. You got two attack buttons. You got A and you got B. Your A button is all your normal attacks. You can just press A the A button, or if you tilt in different directions, like up, down, left, and right, you can do strong attacks, like that. And then when you smash in each direction, there's smash attacks. And that's all for the A. Regular A, up, down, left, and right A, and then a hard, tapping it to the left, right, up, and down. Now for the B button, you can also, that's your special. What you do is press that, and you can do up, down, left, and right. So you can have five special B attacks. That's it. That's for every single character. That's consistent. A, all directions. B, all directions. That's it. You got shield, grab, and jump. There you go. I just taught you how to play Smash. I just, I just literally taught you how to play Smash. That's it. Every other fighter, oh, you gotta fucking down left C for this character, but he's gotta be in this mode. Oh, but you gotta do this at the same time, and then go left, down, up, up, down, left, right, center, square. This joke has gone on far too long. Cut the mic down, Holmes. Fuck. You also made this guy. This little puffer of fluff. Oh, look at him. He's all oh, look at him in this picture. Oh, he's so cute in that one. Oh, so and speaking of puff and fluff, I'm wasting everyone's time. Let's get right to the first Smash Brothers on the Nintendo 64. Released in 1999 in Japan and in the West, Super Smash Bros. was more of an experiment to change up the fighting formula, with not much at risk. Little promotion was made for this game. It's almost the budget, everything looks like a fucking polygon. But, to be fair, so was every other fucking game on the Nintendo 64. Actually, in the early stages of development, it didn't even have its main selling point, having Nintendo characters as the fighters! And it was gonna be called Dragon King the Fighting Game. There's gonna be these guys. These blocky looking guys. I mean, would you want to fucking play as these guys? Oh, oh, I want to be Mario. Oh, I want to be Link. Or I'll just be this guy. 
It's really great there, guys. So to make it easier for audiences to understand their game, they took a bunch of their popular and not so popular Nintendo characters and cast them as the fighters with themed stages to boot. But only one problem. Some, in fact, most of these characters are in very family-friendly games and don't beat the shit out of other people with their bare fists. Nintendo was unsure of promoting a game where Mario, their main flag mascot, the whole name of their fucking company, can headbutt a yellow rodent, where a small pink puffball can drive you so hard in the ground you explode, or where a full-grown man can literally punch a small child in the face. So when news came out that this fighting game featuring Nintendo characters came out in Japan, journalists from everywhere asked Nintendo of America if they are going to bring this game to the West. They said they were, but they talked endlessly on how they had to be careful about bringing this game over and made sure it was appropriate for Western audiences. And with that, they had to change some things around. Like for one example, the sound effects for the punches and kicks in the Japanese version sound much more realistic. In the American version, they sound like fucking bowling pins getting knocked over. They made sure to make it as cartoony as possible with over-the-top moves and items. It wasn't until later where they made the graphical upgrade from Melee and had to change the E rating to a T rating, which has been since then. But it's enough history for one day! Let's get to the actual game! So for this first installment of Smash, there's not a whole lot of extras or modes to try. You got one player mode, multiplayer mode, options and data. That's it. That's it, there you go. You, you want fucking more? You fucking greedy or some shit? In the one player mode, you can pick your favorite character and face against a pre-arranged order of computer players with mini bosses, little bonus games, team battles, and a final fight with a fucking giant ass hand. At the end, your reward is a static victory screen of the character you just used. And in the multiplayer mode, you and three friends can fight each other with set rules, like time or stock. But one thing that'll tickle your fancy is that you can unlock four more secret characters. I remember as a kid wondering who those four characters could be was so mysterious. And I had no idea how to unlock them either. I just did shit and messed around in this random mode for a while, then BAM! A NEW TALENT IS A POTION! And I remember getting to that screen was one of the most surprising and nerve-wracking things ever. A NEW TALENT IS A POTION! Oh, oh my god! Oh, oh my god, I'm so nervous! Oh my god! Oh my god, I'm so nervous, I'm so scared! Oh. But when the planets align and you finally beat the newcomers, you find out the four hidden characters were Luigi, Jigglypuff, Superhero Guy, and Small Child. That's a little weird. Another small little thing I forgot to mention is that each character gets their own little bio and you can read up on who they are and what games they've been in, which is pretty cool. In short, Super Smash Bros. for the Nintendo 64 was a simple game, but with a creative idea. So after what we've seen for the first one, let's see what the second one has to offer. Uh, it's probably gonna just be, you know, like, better graphics, more characters, more stages, a couple new modes, but, you know, let's see what this has to offer. Oh, GameCube is right here, let's get this going flowing, let's get this going. Got it, well, it's, sorry, I put it on the opposite side, let's, let's make sure it's nice and tight. So, okay, there we go. Alright, let's get this going. I think we're ready to go. This is gonna be real good. recording. Right. Remember to like and subscribe <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see more videos. Like this.